In module 2, we have spent quite some time on understanding what data is about and what data can look like. Additionally, we also covered the concept of supervised learning, where we discussed that we want to separate different classes from each other to classes in case the task is binary. Now, all of this is important for this module, where you will learn about kernel methods and the so-called support vector machines. In this video, we will start off by giving an intuitive overview of what kernels actually are. So let's jump right into it. Consider a dataset with two different classes as labels. Let's say we have colored points and gray points. The dataset looks like two concentric circles where the inner circle is the class of colored points and the outer circle the class of gray points. Now, how do we find a model that is able to separate those two classes? A first possibility would be to fit a polynomial of higher degree, which is able to form a decision boundary in the form of a circle that lies in between our two circles. But can we do it using only a linear function? This would be much less complex and therefore more convenient for us. The trick here is to project the data into higher dimensional space. So let's say we go from our two-dimensional space to a three-dimensional space. As you can see, the colored points are located higher than the gray points in three-dimensional space, which lets us easily split the space into two so-called half spaces. By just using a single linear cut, we can now separate our data nicely. Similar to this, we can do the transformation of our space for any dimensional space, but anything that is not 2D and 3D is difficult to imagine. Another easy example is the following. Let's consider some one-dimensional data points, all lying on a single line. Out of our 10 data points, the inner four are colored, the rest is gray. By transforming the data points from x to x squared, we can simply create a parabolic looking arrangement. And luckily for us, we can once again separate the data with a simple linear line. The idea of just taking the x coordinate and squaring it to get the new second dimension can be formally defined as a feature map. A feature map defines the transformation which is applied to a given data point. So as an example, transforming it from 1D to 2D or 3D or any other dimension. Okay, but what are kernels now? We are almost there. Finding a linear classifier requires a lot of dot product operations between two vectors. Think of a very simple linear function as an example, which is used as a regressing function for our data set. If you don't know what a regressing function is, you can check model 5 and we learn everything you have to know. For linear regression, we use the dot product between a weight vector and the vector of the data point to compute the corresponding prediction. Now we could keep doing this and just apply our feature maps onto the vectors and then calculate the dot product. Unfortunately, however, this is rather computationally expensive for most real world scenarios. And now we finally get to see a kernel. A kernel takes two data points as input and is defined as the dot product of those while considering any feature map being applied to both beforehand. A kernel comes with a number of formal criteria that must be satisfied. In more detail, we say that a kernel has to be symmetric and positive semi-definite. But to not overflow this video with formal definitions and math expressions, we will provide you with some additional material, including formal details. The question that remains is, why is a kernel useful? A kernel is defined as applying a feature map and taking the dot product. But the neat part about kernels is that you don't need to know the feature map of your data points. Let's say our kernel is just a dot product of both input vectors squared. This can obviously be defined using feature maps again, but the nice part is that we don't even need to know how the feature map looks like, as long as our kernel follows the formal criteria, of course. But as a kernel now takes two instances as input, we don't really compute a single data point in a new dimensional space anymore. 
Rather than doing this, a kernel projects two data points into a new space, where we can subsequently compute a distance, which can be seen similarly to the known Euclidean spaces. This notion of distance can then be further utilized by a large family of linear classifiers to learn how to separate our two classes accordingly. This means that a kernel provides an interface between learning algorithm and data structure, but more on this in our next video.